Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Morias and I make art tutorials that are fun, easy, and accessible for everyone. So today we're going to be using the Carb Othello pencils, some hard pastels, and some soft pastels. I've already transferred my image by drawing on a piece of tracing paper and then covering the back of that tracing paper with some white soft pastel chalk. And then you turn it over again and you go over it with a pencil and it leaves the white outlines on your paper. I'm using the clear Fontaine pastel mat, which has a nice tooth to it. What I mean by tooth is the, it's got hills and valleys. So when you blend out your chalk will go into the valleys and leave the hills there to accept more pastel on top because we're going to be working in many layers so you'll see in a minute as we go along i'm putting in my colors they look a little bit crazy but as we add more layers on top it's like an underpainting so my reference image i'm going to leave a link to it in the description box below so you can all follow along with me and use the same photo I used. And I also have my reference photo on an iPad, which you saw in the beginning, so I can continually look up at it and see the direction of the fur, where my lights and darks are, and that's kind of what I'm mapping in here. So I'm just trying to get a good base layer down, and in between each base layer, I'm gonna blend it out with a blending stump. Uh, I like to use my fingers as well. You can use uh, soft tools, which are made for pastels, if you're using pan pastels. Um, but I like to use my fingers a lot. I use a cotton bud or a blending stump. So I'm mapping in all of my dark shades and I'm paying close attention that my pencil strokes are going in the same direction as the direction of the fur. So you don't wanna be just putting in areas going in a different direction. You wanna go with the fur because as you go in later on and put your details, you want everything to look natural and the fur to be going in the correct direction. Now I'm paying close attention to where my lightest areas are because I want to kind of keep those um, light. I don't wanna to have to try to put a really light uh, pastel over um, a really dark area. You can do that, but your white areas, I like to keep as bright as possible. So when I go into the eye and I put the reflections in the eyeball, I'm gonna wanna keep those pretty pure because I want that to be a really nice, um, stark, bright highlight. So if you can map your colors out, um, you can always go over and darken, darken things and lighten things, but the, the real white area is that you want to keep white. I would try to preserve them from the beginning and not try to muddy them up uh, by putting in some darker tones and then having to try to lighten it up later on. So I'm going into the eyeball now with a, a base layer of a yellow, and I'm going to add more colors. I'm doing some browns. I'm going to add a little green in there. Um, and then in between each layer, again, I'm blending to push that into the tooth of the paper. Adding in some black, and you have to be careful with black. If an area is really black, then use black. But other than that, I like to use uh, greens, dark greens and reds, um, purples, maybe a plum color, instead of using a straight black. In this case, the part of the eye that I'm putting in black is actually black, so I'm using the black. But just be careful when you're using black. Things can tend to look flat if you're using a straight black. The beauty of pastels is that you are putting layer upon layer, so you can add in other colors and really give a rich, warm depth to things. So each layer, after each layer, I try to blend it in as best as possible so you get a good base layer down. Now I used a kind of a plum colored paper, uh, which I prefer to use a little bit different shade of paper rather than just a white. 
um, it does show through and I can see kind of where I need to add more pastel and which makes it easier to blend the more pastel you have on the paper but you can fill up the tooth of the paper pretty easily not so much on the Claire, uh, Claire Fontaine pastel matte paper um, which is why I love this for pastels and also for color pencil but um, you just have to be careful if you're putting down too much chalk all at once without blending in between it's gonna be harder it, and the dust is just gonna fly everywhere it's gonna be harder for that to stick into the, the tooth of the paper so now I'm going in and I'm adding a little bit of detail in my eyes darkening my darks and I'm gonna add in some rich browns and some greens and it really starts to pop and it really starts to look like a real glassy eye. And I'm going into the nose and we're gonna add in our uh, kind of like a pinky tone. I'm putting in kind of a, a darker red, but I'm gonna go over it with other colors so we're gonna lighten that up. Like in the beginning and I started putting on these really harsh oranges and things, like I said, you're gonna blend all that in with other colors and it's gonna start to really pop and look alive. So you'll see, I, I always go in with more and more layers and blending in between, and that's the key. And, and again, remember to keep your pencils going in the direction of the fur. And pay attention to your reference photo. I really love the iPad in front of me because if I get stuck on a little area, I can blow up the picture and just focus on that one little area. Like on the nose, the, the little hairs start to go in different directions and I want to get that down in my drawing. So I'm paying close attention to that. And for you beginners, it's a lot easier if you take it a little section at a time. I know I'm quite, I kind of draw all over the map. I'm in all kinds of areas. Um, but with pastels, I like to kind of put a nice um, rich base layer down which uh, lets me blend other colors into it and it gets a more realistic effect. Now, I'm not going in with a ton of detail right now yet. I'm still putting in my base tones and then my, my last um, part of it is gonna be going in and putting in all the little fur, um, the little hairs and little pieces of fur. And that's the most crucial part because that's where you really want to get, you, you know, pay attention to which way the fur is going, especially on a cat. Um, things go all over the place and on animals, you never know. So now I'm going in, I'm putting in all my details. You don't really have to have sharp pencils until this stage. I like to have a nice sharp pencil when I'm putting in the fur because I like a nice clean line. Um, but in the beginning, you don't really need a sharp pencil. You just want to get some color down onto the paper and be able to blend it. But I, on your detail phase, I do like a nice sharp pencil. And I'll go over uh, sharpening uh, pastel pencils in another video. Um, but for now, we're just going to go in and we're going to add our little details. And just pay real close attention. It's all the little tiny nuances that really make a drawing pop and come to life. Now you'll see in the bottom corners, it's a little more fuzzy, it's a little more blurry. So I don't need to put all the details in those little corners. Um, but by the nose, because the nose is the closest thing to you, I really wanna get that right and make it look really um, three-dimensional. If you're finding this video helpful today and enjoying my content, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps us out um, to be able to create and put more content out every week for you. Um, give me a thumbs up and I'll and uh, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. And if you'd like to see a full length tutorial on this cat and other things, please check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link below. For a small monthly fee, you'll have access to my whole library of all my tutorials plus the basics and some blogs and some pictures and reference photos and a lot more to come. So please check that out. I'll put the link below. 
And if you're wondering any of the materials that I'm using today, I'll also leave a link in the description box below about Carbothello, Hard Pastels, Soft Pastels, and Pan Pastels. Now you want to be really careful with your finished drawings. Um, I like to use a fixative. I think it does help from all the dust kind of flying around. If you leave your pastels uncovered, even just overnight, if you're going to work on them the second day, I like to put um, a piece of acid-free paper on top or tracing paper. Um, or if you're using the Clairefontaine pastel mat, they come with a nice glassine sheet and just cover it up at night because dust and things will get on there and if you even brush up against it, it's gonna ruin your work. So I really um, like to be careful with that and I also like to use the fixative, like I said, you spray it on um, and it, it does help preserve it um, from just laying around. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I hope you um, learned something, had a good time, and are enjoying my tutorials. I try, as always, to be concise and clear. And leave me a comment if you want to know about any of my techniques or anything I'm doing here today. Or if you just want to see me do a tutorial on something, I'd be happy to, uh, to look at that. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like, maybe leave a comment in the comment section. And happy art. Thanks so much for joining me.